Hey coaches, welcome back to another episode of our three method series. This week we're going to be diving into post defense, perhaps an overlooked element of our defense these days as less and less offenses focus on the post. But we all know that those teams who have good post players are going to use this effectively and we've got to have a plan to defend it. So let's get into our post defense three methods episode. Now, I got three things that we're going to present to us today. We've got a one-on-one -on -one technique defend the post drill. Uh, we've got a two-on-two high-low drill, which I think is great for incorporating the high post element and also the ceiling element of the low post. And then also a four-on-four -four doubling drill where we can work on doubling the post against a dominant post player or even using this as an element to create turnovers within our defense. Lastly, I threw out a Twitter question this week asking coaches what they do with the post on their teams. And I want to kind of look at the results of that and maybe, um, you know, maybe maybe talk about the decisions that I've made on my own approach to this, this element of the game. All right, let's get into our teaching points here. Now, as we usually try to do, we want to keep these teaching points simple. Um, you know, I myself would side with those folks who – who prefer the three-quarter front. Um, you know, we really want to kind of teach, uh, I think, are some simple elements that go along with this. We want to teach getting that backside hand on the small of the back of the post player here. We want to get our chin, of course, on that shoulder of the post player. We want to get that lead foot and that lead hand in the passing lanes to do our best to deter the post entry altogether. I mean, the best way to defend the post is to not let the ball into the post. And by three-quartering it, I think we can gain a lot of the advantage of deterring the post pass while also eliminating some of the negatives of the full front. Now, of course, on those occasions where the ball does go to the post, we want to teach our guys to pop back, right? That just means simply the post pass goes in. Let's not give up the immediate catch and score. Let's get our forearm in their back, get in a low defensive stance, and prepare for contact right off the bat. Um, now, from a force perspective, we want to try to take away the middle here. We know if they can get to the middle, not only do they have their post move, but they have kick out passes. We've got them in a corner of the floor. Let's keep them there and not allow that ball to be driven to the middle. Now, any good post player, of course, is going to have some type of baseline move. So we're teaching take away the middle and then anticipate that baseline move with the hopes of simply contesting it, boxing, and getting us going the other way back on the offensive end of the floor. So we've got to position ourselves in the three quarters, pop back when they touch it, and then take away that middle anticipating the baseline move. All right, let's get into our first three methods concept. Now, what I got up here first is sort of like a one-on-one a, a -on -one defending the post here. I mean, I labeled it as two-on-one uh, just in the sense that we have unguarded passers here, but we're going to give two passers on the perimeter. Typically, let's make our guards those passing roles, or of course, if you got assistant coaches, let them take those roles. We're going to pair up our forwards and our big men, and we're going to let them sort of play out the post position here. Now, more or less, we're going to get the ball passed between the wing and the point, and we're going to ask that to attempt to make post passes here. All right, the passers are allowed to sort of shift along the three-point line to get a better position, but ultimately they're allowed to make passes freely as our post player is working on that three-quarter front technique here. Now, hopefully at some point the ball can get into the posts, and from there we're going to really harp on our one-on-one -on -one defense right, getting that forearm in the back, popping back to prevent any straight line drive, taking away the middle and forcing that baseline move. That's sort of how we want to teach those one-on-one -on -one possessions. And once we get that possession done with, let's get two new guys in there and let's play it out again here, maximize our reps on the practice floor here. All right, now let's get to a two-on-two. -two. Let's kind of add a high post element to this here. I think going to like a two-on-two -two high low action can do a lot of good. It can, it, if we run any post stuff ourselves, it can teach us how to seal. You know, we can teach the, the high low look here. Um, and from a defensive perspective here, we can also teach denying those middle passes here. 
Now, the way I got it set up here is we're going to have a low post player on the ball side and a low post player on the back side. Uh, now, once one uh, of the passer starts with the ball here, we're going to ask the opposite player come and flash to the high post. You know, from a defensive perspective, we're getting our low post player who's three-quarter fronting. We're getting our defensive player here with their lead hand up, attempting to deflect any type of pass going to the high post. Right? And then, of course, the passers are allowed to either hit one of the postmen or skip the ball to either side of the floor here. Now, anytime the ball is skipped, we're going to ask that our high post player dive, as we have in diagram two down here. Now our new backside post player flash up, and we're going to kind of get that high-low action. Uh, you know, from the offensive perspective, anytime they touch to the high post, we're looking low over the top or they can rip and drive it themselves here, right? Now, obviously, we're talking defense here, so we're really just kind of stressing the idea of three-quarter fronting or denying at the high post, and then if they touch, really getting down in a low stance, forcing drives to go outside of the paint where we have perimeter help here. So, you know, that's how we typically would play this out. We'd let the possession go two on two. Typically, I like the idea of, like, getting these four players off the floor Let's get two new pairs in there, and then let's continue to play it here. Um, you know, obviously we can add some scoring elements and get a winner out of this. Um, maybe give the defense points for deflections, steals, defensive rebounds, those kind of things. Or we can just simply get reps uh, with our post players in and out of the concept here. All right, let's get to our third method here. Third method, we're going to bring in a post-double concept. I mean, I do think that doubling the post – is appropriate both against dominant players and can be appropriate against weak players looking to turn them over more often. Now, we're going to pretty much set up in like a, a point wing wing on the perimeter with our one post player, of course, in the middle. We're going to start the concept by asking the ball to be passed to a wing. And whatever wing that player goes to, our postman is going to immediately dig and look for a touch underneath. You know, this gives us a chance to really harp on the three quarter front on the defensive end of things. And then, of course, if they touch, popping back and defending the rim here. Now, since we're, we're working on doubling here, my preference would be to bring our double from the backside here. So as we can see in the third diagram here, the ball is touched to the post. Rather than bringing X3 down, where we can give up this easy sort of kick out ball side three, let's bring our double from the backside. We want this double to be aggressive. Hands are big, right? Our stance is wide. We're trying to deflect anything that's going immediately, and we're closing down that double on the post. We're going to need some real zone type of approach on the backside here from our other defenders. I mean, uh, the four-on-three scramble drill we introduced last week is a great way to, to sort of like pair uh, this post double with the scramble concept here. But from there, we're going to zone up the backside, and we're playing this thing out four-on-four four from this moment on. Now, of course, you know, you can incorporate your double any way that you want, but I like the idea of maybe getting three teams of four here set up, post player in each team, everyone else on the perimeter. Let's see if we can work on this double really quick. Um, really focus in on how they're closing the trap, making sure they're not giving up baseline spins, making sure they're not getting anything into the middle, and then forcing that, that backside zone steal attempt here for us. All right. I want to get to my uh, my Twitter post from last week. Uh, throughout this question, you know what do coaches do uh, against the post themselves here? And uh, I, I was I would not say I was surprised. I kind of expected our three quarter front to be somewhere in the majority. I mean, over half our respondents would choose the three quarter front method here. Uh, you know, it is it's 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 interesting to me. You know, thirty four percent would full front. I mean, here we are. I think we're seeing less and less focus on the post, yet we've got 88% of our respondents that are, are saying that they are responding aggressively to any post-up attempt in three-quarter fashion or full-front fashion. I think that just drives home the point that getting paint touches is so important to offense. Coaches know it, whether it's post entries or dribble drive touches, like getting touches into the paint is such an objective for almost every coach that we've got to have a plan to limit those. And even if post players aren't particularly skilled, a 
post touch is a post touch. And I, I'm sorry, a paint touch is a paint touch, and those can be dangerous here. So even in post form, I like the idea of being aggressive, right? Let's not allow those touches. Let's be aggressive. Let's be physical. Get that ball out of the paint and force teams into shots that aren't as fruitful on the perimeter here. All right, that's all we got for this week, coaches. If you guys haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go to coachlynchbasketball.com. Uh, hit a like on the video below. Subscribe to the channel here. We've got at least six videos now up on our three method series. Take a look uh, on our, my website here as well. Uh, we've been posting these and making these into sort of longer blog posts so you can kind of dissect them with some of my, uh, some of my breakdowns there. And uh, we'll catch you next week for the next one.